Oh, the socialist sensation, who actually grew up in Tony Westchester, New York, but won a stunning primary upset over a top Democrat, is tonight taking her message to Kansas. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is getting back up from maybe the most recognizable socialist in the country. I want to thank you all for having me and for showing, for showing that girls from the Bronx are welcome everywhere. Working people and Kansans share the same values, the same values as working people anywhere else. You know, we must have gotten off at the wrong stop because people told me that Kansas was a Republican state. Does it look like that today? Well, Kansas has not sent a Democrat to Congress in more than a decade, but Ocasio-Cortez is getting behind Democrats who are already giving Republican incumbents a run for their money. So are Republicans ready to take this hard-charging challenge from the far left a bit more seriously? Who better ask than Matt Gorman? He's working at the National Republican Congressional Committee. He joins us live tonight. Matt, appreciate it. Hi, Ed. How are you? Good to see you. I wonder, though, um, first of all, do you get a sense, um, we've heard a lot about uh, how the Democratic Party is being tugged to the left. And now here they are in Kansas with two of their most prominent socialists. What does that tell you? Well, it couldn't make me happier, Ed, first of all. I want to pay for the roadshow across the country. You know, both Bernie and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez support policies on the far left fringe of their party, which just a short time ago was kept in the far left fringe. And yet now it's in the mainstream across the Democratic Party with candidates all over the country. Issues like single payer health care, which would give government complete control of your health care and raise taxes by thirty two trillion dollars, abolishing ICE and impeaching the president. You know, let's take a step back for a second. If mm -hmm. folks are watching Fox at home and they're sitting around their kitchen table or in their living room trying to figure out how to save for a vacation in August or make ends meet, and they hear one side talking about policies in the far left fringe and the other party talking about the cost of living and rising wages and low, uh, low unemployment and high economic growth, I think that's a choice that benefits us in the fall. Uh, to your point, Bernie Sanders said something else at this rally I want to play. Take a listen to what Bernie said. about how much this will cost. And our political opponents, you know, they'll tell us, well, you know, that's a great idea, Bernie, but, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money. And they're right. These proposals are expensive. So back in the campaign, I remember the Hillary Clinton camp was pushing this Wall Street Journal story that added up all of Bernie Sanders' promises, free college tuition, Medicare for all. And I checked the numbers today. It was going to cost at least $18 trillion. What does that tell you that today he's not backing away from that? Instead, he's going to the heartland and saying, yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. Well, what he won't tell you exactly is how much it costs, number one, how much you'll have to raise taxes, $32 trillion to pay for it, or what he'll have to do to programs already in existence that people rely on, like Medicare Part D or the VA or Medicare and Social Security, how they'll have to change irrevocably to account for this again, mm -hmm. government takeover of health care. All right, Matt, I got one minute. Let's tell the other side of the story, which is that you're already playing a lot of defense. Let's face it, in these midterm elections uh, is the flip side of this. The fact that if Bernie Sanders and others on the far left believe that they can go to the heartland, does that suggest they do have energy out there? And you've got some incumbents like in Kansas, like Kevin Yoder, who are fighting for their lives right now. Does the left have the energy? Are you worried about that? Well, again, they're nominating candidates, just like in Kevin Yoder's district, that are far to the left of these districts and are rendered unelected in a general election. One of the candidates had to cross over state lines. He lives in Missouri to go to the rally tonight in <laughs> Kansas. And he supports, again, single-payer health care, which is out of step and out of the mainstream of most, most Americans. We'll have that choice in the fall. I relish it. Yeah. Okay. Last point here. Uh, what We're getting closer and closer. We get, get you every few months to give us a prediction. Uh, the president believes with the economy where, it, where it's at, maybe four and a half percent growth, record low unemployment, that maybe you guys are making a, a last stand here. Are the Republicans going to be able to hold the House? Absolutely. We're going to hold the House, and that will be the headline the day after Election Day. All right. You heard it from Matt Gorman at the National Republican Congressional Committee. We appreciate you joining us on this Friday night. Thanks, Ed. Happy birthday. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to hear that a lot tonight, I guess. Thank you. I appreciate it. When